sure to check out the shows. Uh, today we have a very special event. Uh, this is um, Clowning While Female, a conversation. Uh, please turn off your cell phones and give it up for, for a candle. conversation um, today, we are filming, you can see, there's a lot of filming going on. We are, um, <coughs> we're supposed to be live streaming on HowlRound. That didn't quite work, so I think we're Facebook living, and later it will be up on HowlRound. So there are lots of um, cameras and stuff going on, but that's fun. Um, I'm just going to, I'll get back to these people later, but this is Sonia Norris, Julie Pasquale, Hillary Chaplin, and Cecil McKinnon. I'll introduce them more a little bit later. I just want to say who's here, the cameras, the people, you all. Um, I've had so many fantastic conversations with women who couldn't be here tonight, um, who really wanted to Skype in and be here. It's been really uh, enjoyable and dynamic to see that. Could we not have them so bright so that I can see the... Um, thank you. Uh, and uh, I want to invite them, even though they're not here, they want to be here, even though they maybe they're watching the stream, but they will watch it later, so they'll be here later. Um, I also want to name all the women who came before us, who are no longer with us, but um, we follow in their footsteps, and um, happy to be talking about clowning and clowning all female. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to introduce these women and myself a little bit more, and then we're going to talk a little bit amongst ourselves, and then we're going to open up for questions and, and um, hopefully open up the conversation, and then, then we'll finish and I'll say some thank yous, and then we'll all mingle, and then we'll go out on the street, and we'll get more, work. and we'll exchange phone numbers, and call each other tomorrow and talk some more. Um, <laughs> because this is just the beginning of um, ongoing conversation. I mean, it's not even the beginning. It's an <laughs> ongoing conversation. Um, I am hoping that we are here today to share our experiences and um, our knowledge and our um, experience of clowning while female and what that's about, and that we can witness one another and um, share stories and support and inspire one another to go forward and do more clowning while female. Um, and even though we're going to be sitting like these people up here and you're out there, it's, it's really kind of a circly thing. So mm -hmm. I just want to say that it's kind of a circly thing. And also we're leaving the house lights up a little so we would be more circly and cameras are circly and people want to be home are circly. So, um, that's that. That's that. Do you want to put your more recording device down? Yeah, I don't know what it, it will. I don't even really know how it works. And I have, but I have, have well, is it a voice recorder? It's a Ooh. voice recorder. And it's, it's like old school. Yeah, look, like it's push yeah. it. But I don't know whether it will pick us up, but I'm because we're on the phone. Just don't. No, it's not. Look, it's rolling. It's an eye machine. Ooh, sure. I pick you up. It's an eye machine. That'll pick you up. So uh, let me introduce these folks. Um, Cecil McKinnon is here. And um, Cecil came to clowning through two pathways. One was circus. And she was part of an act known as the Pickle Family Jugglers, which later expanded into the Pickle Family Circus. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, she came to clowning through Shakespeare and working with Mary Conway, uh, both as a director and an actor in Shakespeare's comedies, principally at Shakespeare and Company. And currently, as Circus Flora um, is where Cecil is now, as a director and white faced clown, where she's created shows in the 1200 seat circus tent and also in collaboration with the St. Louis Symphony at Powell Hall. 
And she's an actor and director of theater, um, lots of Shakespeare and some opera in New York City and regionally. And as a teacher, she's until recently been um, an arts professor at the Experimental Theater Wing at NYU's Tisch School of the Arts undergraduate drama program. And we have Hillary. <laughs> 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 Hillary Chaplin is here next, um, and uh, Hillary has been touring for since 2005. Her uh, in, uh, internationally with her original solo show, A Life in Her Day, which was directed by Abner Eisenberg, and she's been in variety shows worldwide uh, with her short comic numbers. Drawing inspiration from clown theater, movement, objects, and puppetry, at which she is brilliant with all of those objects. I'm so admir admiring of that. Hiller's been creating solo and ensemble work for the past 40 years. She was an original cast member in Bill Irwin's Largely New York and appeared on Broadway in the public theater production of The Tempest, directed by George C. Wolfe. She played a featured role in Forrest Gump and a lawyer on Law and Order Criminal Intent. She's entertained children in New York City hospitals as Nurse Nice of the renowned Big Apple Circus Hospital Clown Program and uh, is a founding member of the New York Goofs, which was uh, a clown ensemble uh, created in 1996. She's premiering a new show in Poland this year, The Last Rat of Theresienstadt, which I saw a uh, debut performance. I'm not sure how you call it. That. A work in progress. A work in progress the other night. It's a really beautiful show. So when it comes back to New York, you should all see it. And uh, Hiller's also a teacher of clown and physical comedy and clowning in hospitals. From a background in dance and movement, Julie has spent her entire clowning career in the hospitals, first with Big Apple Circus Clown Care, and now with Healthy Humor. Her clown is extremely physical, mischievous, and has an intense fondness for wearing undergarments <laughs> on her head. <laughs> <laughs> Julie is also a storyteller, a yoga teacher to all kinds of different populations, and a world traveler, and is doing a lot of teaching and bringing her uh, gifts while she's traveling. director, devisor, performer, and teacher, working internationally with theater circus clown, puppetry, and dance companies, and um, she's recently directed Ra Rush Rochelle? 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 Oh, Rochelle Ellie. Rochelle Ellie and her one woman Rochelle Mao at the Ottawa Fringe Festival, worked with Vancouver's you know, Clown Collective, The Assembly. Um, over the past few years, she's been performing in a garbage can <laughs> and collaborating with double amputee aerialist Erin Ball and Legacy Circus. She also teaches and directs with social circus theater and puppetry projects, working with marginalized pop populations in Zimbabwe, South Africa, Canada's Arctic, and Toronto. She has an MFA in directing from New York University, and she's a PhD candidate at the University of Toronto Center for <coughs> Drama, Theater, and Performance Studies, researching female clown as a practice of survival and a performance of failure by those who fail to perform amidst the trauma of happiness in success-oriented cultures. Oh <laughs>
costume, this and that, and uh, yet the other instruction was clowns, you have to be yourself, and those things didn't go together for me. So I, my question um, to you is how do you explore clown and gender? I mean, th this old idea that clowns have no gender, I mean, did you work with that? Did you change how you, did you just make discoveries, and what, what was your journey about that? Sure. Um, well, because I'm very tall, I was, uh, or not very tall, but taller, um, I am often, or a lot of the audience, as they're leaving, we shake hands, they say, oh, <coughs> you're a girl. Or, oh, and, and, uh, and because I do white face, and it's, that it's a traditional 19th century clown from paintings. I think a lot of women have done it. I mean, I've seen them in Europe. And uh, so in a sense, it is exactly that. It is unclear what gender my clown, that clown is. Uh, I don't think I deliberately try to make anyone think I'm either, that I'm a man, I assume I'm a woman, but <laughs> I also believe that I'm Louis XIV, who is man. But, um, because Louis XIV had infinite power and knew that he was right. <laughs> that is part of my character. I'm always right. So I think that's a, a male quality rather than a female quality in the audience's mind. So I play with that. I mean, I obviously make fun of, of that. I'm usually wrong about what I think I'm right about. But it's that area, I think. So, but I think it was more the, the image of the painting uh, than a decision I made. And then it's the audience don't see, it, you know, it's a big velvet costume, I happen to be tall, my name is Cecil, which is, uh, you know, I mean, in, in the Midwest where I perform a lot, it's a female name, but in the East, it, you know, so. Did you ever explore uh, a clown that was? Well, absolutely, in theater, of yeah. course, I play, uh, always play female characters, um, and I, th I always thought exaggerating your female characteristics was the most fun. Uh, you know, huge butt, big, huge breasts. Um, and uh, so sort of going that way was where I tended to go. Well, early on when I started, I never really thought about whether or not it was male or female or, or without gender. I just assumed. I was female. <laughs> I still think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> but in my early exploration, I also put on a fat suit for a while. And I found that putting a fat suit on kept me, allowed me to stop thinking about the female of me. Mm -hmm. And just allowed me to, to be in the moment and react to whatever it was that was happening. And so I was not concerned about how I looked. And that was a really great sort of period of growth for me. And I started doing some pieces that um, I started trying to make myself look really good and still be funny. And I had one of my mentors, whose name I don't think we need to mention, um, <laughs> said, Hillary, you have to make yourself look funny. You can't look so beautiful and do that and, and be funny. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I, I think you're wrong. I'm going to try to look my best and still be funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, that's, that's worked really well. I see no reason for women not to look beautiful and be able to be funny. At the same time, I love, I love playing with all kinds of costume and character and, and, and shapes and um, and not afraid to look ugly which can be really fun but I don't think it's necessary Done. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny before I talk about myself Hillary just said something that I witnessed in a workshop once and there was a girl who was very I mean beautiful like big blue eyes what do they call Raphael curls or whatever the big blonde curls and stuff like that? And this particular teacher, who does not need to be named, <laughs> like walked up and said, "You know your problem? You're too pretty." 
and he made her put her head in a garbage can, like a garbage can all during the day we've been like throwing stuff in. And it was when we were talking before about uncomfortable moments in workshops. <laughs> and I remember, and I to this day I feel bad that I did not stand up for her because she was like, Ooh, well, he's telling me to do this. And she was so earnest and wanted to do it. So she walked over and she did it and then she ran from the room crying. Aww. And that was and so I will never forget that because it wasn't true. The work she had been offering was darn funny. It was whatever their perception you say it was a male teacher of it that caused her then to have this complete shutdown of the thing. And so I'll, I'll, I'll never, ever forget that. Um, so that's, when you said that, that's one thing I thought about. Um, and then I, it's interesting, because I came to clown from the dance world. So at the beginning, I, was, I wanted to be the pretty ballerina, so it's all about, like, the look. And I knew I didn't fit in in, 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 in that way. And then I played a lot of, because I'm the opposite of you, I'm very small, um, and with my energetic, I was often playing little boys quite a bit. When I met my husband, I was playing little boys, and I was like, that tells more about him than not me. <laughs> but, um, but it's interesting, but then when you really came to clown, my clown is so immensely girly. And I am not, I mean, like I purposely keep my hair like two inches long, and barely wear makeup, but she is this, very girly, albeit mischievous, but in this really girly demeanor, and I don't even know. I can't even. I can't even explain it. It's like when I have partners that had to work with me before in the hospital. This one partner says, "You're really into shoes," and like I am not, but she is. <laughs> I couldn't tell. Like I got you know 50 years Crocs on, so that's really <laughs> interesting. That I feel like my clown, she very much is very feminine and such the biggest flirt that I, I've been married for forever, which I ne never was, so <laughs> it's just been my experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, what? No? Do I need one or not? Um, <laughs> so much technology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my cloud is also really girly. Uh, and now exists in a garbage can a lot of the time but of her own <laughs> militia. <laughs> um, Nobody puts the baby in a garbage can. <laughs> uh, but I, I, like this is it's this is the heart of what I'm seeking to unpick or or to to just take a look at in terms of other people's clown as well. I never contemplated whether my clown should or shouldn't be girly. Uh, she just really was really girly in all the ways that I as Sonya won't. I'm gonna wear boots mm -hmm. and I'm gonna stomp around so that you know, don't fuck with me or, or, or it makes me safe or whatever or all of those things on, on stage as a clown, then I, I can play with all the things I won't allow myself to play with. I can play with, with high heels and with um, flouncy stupid dresses that actually give me great pleasure to wear sort of for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> do you know that's that's a, I don't sit easily with that as I am now at a stage by doing a PhD out of the blue with about something I never thought that I would be analyzing, but it's making me analyze things that I have allowed myself to be unconsciously responsive to. And um, and I think that that is incredibly important. That it, that's why I'm doing it right now, this PhD around female clown, is that I, I think that we need to actually think through these things we don't have the luxury of being unconscious and just being inspired in the moment. Um, not saying that we shouldn't do that and shouldn't follow the impulse. And I really believe that our clowns are created from a place of pleasure. We follow what gives us pleasure um, to show up on that stage. And s But now I have to unpick, what am I doing in a pink bridesmaid's dress with little white gloves on, talking like a little girl, God help. <laughs> like it's it's so not what I believe in and yet there I stand and with big huge buck teeth because I like we've heard same thing I was told not that you're too beautiful I didn't seem to accede to that limit of, of, of <laughs> <laughs> that was never it but I was told you're too symmetrical <laughs> so it's sort of like you're too perfect to look at that there's no funny and I accepted that. I wasn't in. It, it, it didn't actually take that as a negative. I'm like, oh, I understand that. It makes total sense. I'm too symmetrical. 
<laughs> you need something that throws you off balance. I, I can agree with that. I can get on board with that. And so I created these huge buck teeth that throw me out of balance in speaking, which I actually really appreciated because it means that my, like Sonia's mind can't actually work mm. in the same way. It's, I am put into a different way, a, a different rhythm of response mentally as well as therefore physically and that's what the costuming does as well for me is that it puts me into a different place of response um, because I can't, I can't move literally in the exact same way and yet it's doing all those things that you could go, well, that's exactly why women have been put in high heels and tight dresses, it's, it in, incapacitates us, it immobilizes us. Yep, and I don't agree with all of that. So I actually sit in an uneasy place of, of just uncertainty right now. I'm, I'm not changing what I'm doing, but I'm very conscious of it, and I'm not comfortable with it. Um, and just before I, s I stop on this subject, I, j I wanted to, to just mention that that um, the the issue of, I think that we're, that we're talking about with this question um, really comes back to h how can we dis disrupt how we are perceived as, as women. I think that that actually is a, an issue every single time that a female clown sets foot on the stage. And as to whether we are subverting or just diverting or um, reinscribing the norms and the demands of society on us, or whether we're saying, I don't care, that's not what I'm, I have, I'm not even dealing with any of those things, and yet your presence still is. Whether you choose to think about it or not, it still is the minute that you step, step foot on stage. And therefore, how, how do we interrupt the immediate response of the fact that the reality is that we live in a world, in a society, where as a female, there are perceptions that are in place just the minute that people look at us. And and that is different, I think, than, than um, when a, a male clown sets foot on stage, even though, of course, we have perceptions and demands and norms around men as well. But I think that that's the difficulty that as female clowns that we are constantly dealing with is, well, then what, what do, do we buy into it? And do we put on our lingerie? And do we play with being super sexy? Or no, I shouldn't do that. Oh, God, I shouldn't do that. Well, then what? But I actually like playing with being so. <laughs> what am I doing here? What am I doing? I, I've had the experience of, you know, the idea that the, the audience is going to tell you what's funny, that, that idea. That, and I've had the experience of being in a clown workshop um, that was uh, a co-ed co clown workshop and um, doing something on stage. And I could see some of the guys in the room were like, yeah, yeah, do that thing do that sort of crotchy thing yeah. and they're going to laugh and they're going to find it funny and I was like I see how how that would um, inform me and it wasn't what I wanted to do so I sort of had to do that and then let it go and move on and I was like oh that would <coughs> get into Buffon territory and like deal with that in a certain way but it really like in a room f uh, an audience that I can see certain people are responding they're, they're saying please go do that thing and I, and I was like that's not really what I want to do so, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons I get in a room with other women, so that we are really, and even when I make my own solos, I'm in the room by myself, because I like a lot of privacy to figure out what I, what I want to be making and, and, um, and sharing. So, um, I totally agree that what, what we is being seen, that we're addressing that when we get in front of an audience. Um, I had a conversation with Amy Gordon, who couldn't be here, but she was talking about, uh, and it was sort of related to this question about gender, but also whether clowns are sexual or not. And she said she had, I, I hope she doesn't mind my sharing this, but um, <coughs> she uh, said somebody had said to her, oh, you can't do that, you can't be sexual. And she said, well, you know, did anybody tell the fucking audience that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, know you get on stage and there's something going on there that you have to deal with. and. Um, so I want—I just want to throw it out there. If, if the idea of clowns is not, besides not having gender, like not having any sexuality, like I mean, they're related. But if that—if that has come up, the, you know, the beauty issue, or yeah, Julie. But actually, before you get to that, yeah. I realized that your conversation, because I do have the extra thing of like, hmm. <laughs> so are there like your perception of not only is a woman, it's a black woman. Mm. 
And so there are for sure things people definitely expect me to say, to do, to be able to do, and that's always very interesting. Because sometimes I will go down that road because again, I want to please the audience. Even if it's not something I want to do, and I know quite frankly, I'm going to get the laugh because as a black person, if especially if I'm doing a group thing, if I say this, everybody will laugh because it's a play on my color. And so I do use it, but at the other hand, there's some days I'm like, like I don't, that's not actually what I want to say or do. But again, I know, I, you know, I'm me inside, but I can't, you know, from yoga, I'm a soul and all that stuff, but I can't escape the, 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 the brown packaging. And so it's, it's very interesting. And also, um, I, I perform mostly at, at this hospital that's in, in Harlem, and so it's very interesting because there's a lot of, I either sometimes the other black women who are perceiving me are either, um, some of them are church going ladies who quite frankly, there was one lady when I was very new to clowning and she called me over and she says, honey, don't make a fool out of yourself like that. <laughs> and so there was, there's that. And then there's also the, uh, what I call the African queens. We have a lot of West African um, women who are kind of looking at me like with that same kind of like, you know, it's like, is she making fun of herself? Is she making fun of all of us? So it's an interesting a part of being a native New Yorker as I grew up very almost devoid of really being conscious of my color quite a bit. It was a different New York, I guess, <laughs> than it is now. Um, and it was only really when I came into theater when I was being cast in things, no, this is not the show for you, no, this is not the show for you, that I really became aware of it. And so most of the time I, say, I have to say it's not a thing in cloud, but there are different times when, like what I do, if I'm really reading the audience, I'm like, oh, you want me to do the sassy black woman thing? Okay, I will. But it's the same, I, I, I balk at, I mean, a clown's job is to expose humanity, you know, male and female, and uh, therefore I think there's lots of very sexy male clowns. Um, I mean, it depends on the person's take, but uh, that's part of who they are too, is sexuality. Um, so I just, I just don't think, I think it's, it is the job of a clown to be to be everything, but, but or, or whatever the particular thing about humanity you're on at that moment, like, yeah. Yeah. and of course for women it's this is what women are, but for men it's the, this is what men are. Uh, uh, so I guess that's where I'm kind of like, I don't see it as just women's problem. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly also really agree with what you all were saying about, you know, when I'm in the position of hiring clowns. Uh, I really like, uh, maybe, I just really like female clowns to be attractive in some way, not to be grotesque. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just probably personal taste. I don't know how, or it's an evolving world we're in, maybe, about what you find funny, what you find. Can, can I ask why you don't want them to be grotesque? Um, uh, uh, because I find it, more appealing than when they're showing me, I mean like buffoon is different, but if you're doing clown, uh, like an entree that you're gonna watch for eight or nine minutes, it, it to me needs, it needs to bring in the audience in some way. So I think that's why. And I feel like it, it wants, uh, there's a, a clown Amanda, do you know? In Chicago, anyway. Crockett, Amanda Crockett, Crockett. Yeah. Who, who I think is, is wonderful. She's like you. She's small and wiry, and uh, could play a little girl, and she sort of does. Uh, but she plays on that sort of what I imagine. I don't you know where yeah. you work, but so I don't know if I've answered your question. Well, I think that it, then that I'm sort of tinning my mouth shut because then my, I immediately then go well. Then so what is? Could you define what is grotesque mm -hmm. to you? Because I think that 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 is necessary then mm -hmm. to understand. Well, what are, what do we actually mean by grotesque? What do we mean by attractive? What I guess I was thinking of. Uh, uh, fright wigs and big red noses and um, things that scare children, um, which which can be overcome. Uh, but they're seeing a, a problem with that, so I like, like that image. 
like that traditional American yes, the image of the clown of yeah. the, 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 right. the, yeah. the party right. store. Yeah. 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 Or, or highly distorted somehow. Yeah, that's been left behind, yeah. it seems to me. Um, yeah. I think. I mean, maybe I think, there's some know, of it around, but you see balloon you twisters see and yeah. face yeah. painters yeah. like that, but for the most part, yes. Yeah. Because I think that the the um, the point that you just brought up about honey, don't don't make yourself foolish or mm -hmm. don't make a fool of yourself. Mm -hmm. This is something that I have been thinking about in, in um, regards to women as well. And um, and although there is sexuality, I agree for in both men and women. And, and the clown is about bringing forward what is human and the issues that we have as being human. Therefore, sexuality be part of it, all of that, but the thing is is that women are sexual objects in a way that men are not in our society, and that's just a simple fact. Um, I will not believe that we are equal in that, that, in how we are perceived sexually as men or women in our society, and therefore how we play with our sexuality on stage is not equal either. And that is, that's a problem, therefore, with how do we play with it, and the thing about clown um, and this gets into well, what is clown and what do we believe clown is, but so let's just say that, that right now I'm talking about that I, that I think that, that as clowns we do stand on the stage and whether we are going down that pathway of love me, love me, or if, if, if give me a laugh, you're looking for, for some kind of a, approval. Now what word we use for that, is it approval, is it appreciation, is it to be loved, all of those things, they are difficult they, they have a lot of baggage around them, those concepts, for anybody, absolutely, but for women, I think, specifically. Because we are brought up, all generalizations, but we're brought up to make sure that we are pleasing. We are brought up to make sure that we are appealing. We are brought up to make sure that we are attractive, that we are not too much, not grotesque, not exceeding, all of those things that, that I think we probably all know already. But therefore, I think, like I think about those things now in a way that I didn't think about it when I was in my own clown training at X number of years ago. And now when I enter a clown workshop or I or enter the stage as a clown, I do think about, Sonia, what are you doing when you look out there at that audience and you go, do they like me? <laughs> do you like me? In whatever way that I am doing something. And part of me wants to smack that down in myself. Mm -hmm. And yet, it is actually part of the heart of clowning. I mean, I'm a little reluctant to say this because I'm, I'm sure that we could also unpack that and go, well, that's an old concept, or maybe that's what we need to get rid of. Or, but then if we get rid of it, then what is, what is clown? What am I doing there, open-heartedly going, yeah, and here's whatever my plan is that I've come up with that I really want to share with you. I don't want you to go, you know what, I think that you're boring. So I am looking for an approval, mm -hmm. and that is is carrying baggage of myself as a woman in society, wanting to be liked or knowing that I am not. But really knowing that I'm failing. And just one last thing along with it, because it comes off the foolishness, is that I've been thinking about how clown is about revealing the stupidity, right? In the best possible way, but the stupidity of humanity. And that we, and I believe in that. I believe in, in I want to see more frankly, losers on stage doing those <laughs> things that I can really relate to, that I am just failing at, and yet surviving and living with and finding pleasure to be alive still in my fallible state. And yet, if women are often perceived as stupid to begin with, mm -hmm. we carry that baggage. So how do I find the pleasure? How do I play with stupidity when I actually in my life or I have spent a lifetime trying to prove that as a 5'2 blonde female I'm no fucking dummy. I am not stupid. And there comes the rage. I do want to um, talk about the obstacles, our inner obstacles um, for clowning. I don't, I don't know if that's what you were going to um, address Hillary but I want to. I was going to say that I think men are, I don't think it's that different with men on stage. They want to be loved. I don't think it's that different with any kind of artist who is creating something that they're going to put out in the public. Part of that is 
self-expression, these are my ideas, these are my feelings, these are, 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 are what's important to me. But I think every artist wants appreciation and love for their art form and for their expression of their work. And I don't disagree with you that women are brought up wanting to please people in a much different way than men are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I often feel like the challenge is, is, you know, understanding my right to be on the stage, my right to own the stage, and clowning because there's so much with the audience, you know, the right to that space as, as well. I mean, not to, to be uh, as powerful as possible on the stage with the audience and engage with people, and um, that that's the challenge that I'm coming up against. I mean, it's basic, you know, do I have, do I have the right to be on the stage and, and play and be seen and all that, so, um, and I may, it may not be, it may not be just women who have that issue, but it seems like when I've worked with, uh, in workshops and with my troupe and, you know, I think one of the reasons I'm working in a room that's just women is because then there's suddenly that, some of that issue is gone and we make our own world and then when we put a show on stage, we're bringing our whole world to the stage, and we're not having to ask for permission from the audience in the same way, because it's our world that now you're invited into. So, um, I mean, you know, I'm sort of curious how, I mean, because different kinds of clowning happens different ways, theater, circus, you know, the, and in the hospitals, you know, when you're in, working in the hospital, you walk into a different room every day, and you're, you know, you have to ask permission every day when you go in. And um, how does that how does that change whether you're okay, you know, like, and whether you're allowed to be there or not, and what does that do for you as an artist or human being? I don't know if anybody has thoughts about that or more about obstacles that you... I just, uh, a thought in relation to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I worked in the hospitals for, for many years, and there are times when a kid doesn't want you in their room. And it's not about you. The, the wonderful thing that I finally learned was, it's not personal in any way. It's not me they don't want. They don't want the presence of what we are because they're in a state where they're just not open to it. And it has nothing to do with me. So for me to go through that process of understanding, was really good for me as a performer mm -hmm. because it, it took it out of the personal. And in the hospital, it, you, you have to leave that ego behind and know that you're there for whatever the child mm -hmm. needs in the moment or the family. Yeah. And also what what we do in the hospital, there's, with, we use the word per permission, there's so many different ways of getting permission. It's very different. The permission might just be a I just, it might be, yeah, yeah, come in, or it might be just a, a blank, or there's so many different ways of getting permission. Like, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, yeah, the sure, whatever. <laughs> or just like, yeah, it's like, yeah, like a teenager, yeah, so you come in, yeah. Or it might be just even the, like, the raise the eyebrow, and you think, yeah, you're gonna go for it, and, and go in, but Louie's absolutely right. You get to the point where it's like, it's not, it's not personal. This kid's has just been stuck with a thousand different needles and they're not home and they're scared and I'm certainly not going to take that they don't want me to come in and walk into a wall for them. Like an all person. <laughs> 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 so in a way, that, going through that has given me a, a new kind of idea of permission mm -hmm. of what I'm, what I should or shouldn't be doing, allowed to do. I, I don't think I question it as much in mm -hmm. some areas working on a new show, I question it in different areas in regards to that. So, I'm not cured. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit related to this, I wanted to ask, what when you're going to create something new um, or perform, what, 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 what is the best room? You know, what do you want in the room to make the best room for your creativity or your you know, your performance and your clown to come out. Whether, I mean, you know, maybe it's the best you know, uh, studio space or, I mean, whatever you want to describe, or the best performance. Like, what what are the things that really make you say, this is this is the room where I can do my best clown? Looking at me like. <laughs> That's just a question. I've never, I've never had the, I guess, the luxury of, of 
identifying what's the best thing. Mm -hmm. So I get the, but and yet there's there must be things that I, I need. It's like things. I think it's, I'm just looking for an inspiration. Other people. I like other people. But things. I need a kid. <laughs> yeah, I especially since again I'm only in, nearly in the hospital. I need. There's nothing, and maybe Hillary can say or experience. Like, there's there's nothing that I can manufacture in a studio that will be exactly the same thing as as I walk into the hospital room or walk into the clinic. And there's all those different variables. And for me, that's <coughs> well. I guess it is. It's having a lot of stuff. I have so much stuff. I have so much stimuli in there about that. There's like, you know, the things on the walls and stuff. That's what I mean, yeah. <laughs> and your work is also improvisational. Yes. You're not working on something in a studio yeah. to then present to an audience. Right. Yeah. 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 I think for me, too, I, I, I like having other people. And I like having people who I know don't care if I really fail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be able to be really bad mm -hmm. in order to find what's good. Well, I think ideally I like people, but I don't usually, I mean, often I have a lot of hostile people, um, so that's, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it is. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, a, you know, there's 90 people around, and not really, you know, going, oh, that's really interesting. Um, but it, it does come back for me always to the same thing, which is uh, a reason that I think it's important to do this, just the same as why go on stage is because you think you're saying something, or something I, w I, I want us to say, and we're, you know, we're working towards that. It may be horrible, but the reason is that <coughs> there's, there's something we're trying to say about society, people, relationships, what, you know. But it's also tremendously difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how it is if you work on your own, but to rehearse a clown act without an audience it's really hard because you, it's just really, really, I mean, you, you set it up and you kind of, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that means working or not. You know, it, 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 it is always, I guess, what, you, you know, what you're calling improvisation, but it's all, you know, you can set up a structure, but, it, yeah, I mean, it, we, I mean, like Adam, we were doing a dress and he's like, okay. <laughs> that was the act. All right, so we'll move on. There's nobody there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I hope it works out. Yeah. So that's, I, I think yeah. that must be true whether yeah. you're alone or with yeah. 90 people. Yeah. Yeah. It's just more hostile when there's 90 people going. <laughs> <laughs> hostile. This better be Yeah, yeah. It's just like a couple glasses and, but now I, if I'm not wearing them when I'm working I can't see myself in the mirror so I don't have this audience and I'm suddenly like this isn't really fun anymore <laughs> so that there's something about even in the mirror you know this engagement but I feel like it, it, as you say the clown doesn't really come alive without some of that you can set up a lot but it is so much about the play and this other engagement even if it's yeah. even as me with myself it's yeah. sort of I wish I could amuse myself that much. <laughs> <laughs> you know this thing that, that they say you, uh, if you laugh by yourself, that there's <laughs> like a sign or you're, you're insane. not yeah, exactly. So every time uh -oh. I laugh by myself, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I walk down the street and start laughing at something, and I'm like, this is okay. <laughs> 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 I wanted to ask, uh, what is the most gender wacky thing someone has said to you about your clown? Wait for it. Well, I've had a lot of inappropriate things said. Like, um, uh, because I do play quite the flirt 
um, in the hospital, and I have 5,000 boyfriends among the hospital staff. Everybody's a sweetie, a chicky, and da 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 da. And so there have been times where, you know, particularly this one police officer, uh, hospital police officer, <laughs> who is a mountain. He is like all of us, like <laughs> that much. He's this huge guy. And he's got these big eyes, he's like, ah, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> And so we play this very flirtatious games, and every once in a while, because I am totally playing, but every once in a while it tips into, I'm not sure if that's, you know, and particularly, I'm always with a partner, and I particularly, if, and if I'm with one of the other women, if they, if I feel them start to like, <laughs> then I know, because I'm so familiar, and it is so much my game with them. So I've had like some things that, that I'm like, but my meter is sort of like, if it starts to feel like a creepy place, then I back off. But I can't like think of one particular thing. But there have been times when I felt like, yeah, you went to, you went to the bad place. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really think of any gender wacky things. Gender inappropriate. I was on stilts oh God. at a gig with a lot of drunken people, and I think, the majority of them were men. It was some kind of a business thing, an evening party, and they were drunk. And when I'm on stilts and a man is standing in front of me, he comes to a certain level of my body <laughs> and made some inappropriate gestures towards that part of my body. And that was pretty, pretty uncomfortable. I've had that as well. What did you respond? How did you respond? I turned to it. I, 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 it's quite a while ago, but I, I think I gave him just a kind of a disgusted look and just turned. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'd respond today. Mm -hmm. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I stopped doing that kind of work soon after that, though. Mm -hmm. Mm. Having those kinds of experiences, and 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 then at a nightclub where I had to be out in the middle of this dance floor, and you know people just uh, d treating me again a little bit inappropriate. I thought I don't have to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just don't have to do it, so I stopped. I I once had after doing a clown act, somebody said, a man said to me afterward. Your husband must be very lucky. I don't have a yeah. husband. Right. Yeah, don't know. I mean, sense. but I, I understood it to mean the man who gets to touch you or be around you. You know, it was, it was just sort of so odd. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, just an odd thing. I, I just found <laughs> a clown act. Yeah. You didn't take it as a compliment. Um, I took it that he was excited by my work, so <laughs> I said, uh, your work, uh, you know, positive something, yeah. but I, it w I didn't bother explaining to him why that was a completely inappropriate thing to say and weird and whatever, because why? Why? What am I going to explain? He's going to understand that that's what I'm going to say. There was one thing. <laughs> and I, uh, it was a gender wacky thing, but I, it wasn't one of those things that made me creep out. Um, Traditionally, um, the the last shift before Thanksgiving in the hospital, we do this thing, a lot of clowns do it in the hospital, uh, where one of us dresses up like a turkey and the other was like the chef and <laughs> running around. And so all through the clinics is like this traditional thing. It's like, you know, so I, I'm usually the turkey. And so, like, <laughs> so I remember I was running by, and I think Lane Barton, for those who know Lane, he was, um, the chef coming after me and we were in an elevator or something and there was some male staff member and uh, I was like, oh no, save me, save me. And Liam's going, no, get her, get her. And he looks at me and goes, not enough breast meat on that bird. <laughs> it's like, but it wasn't like a creepy, we just got to all kind of laugh. Come on. <laughs> and then we'll take some questions from the audience, I think. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit, I mean, you talked about um, breast meat on your bird. You know, um, what about, what do you, what have you been exploring about your, I, 
relationship to the body that um, you know how to work with that I mean how to how does it um, manifest these questions about you know um, who's in charge of my body how do I use my body I mean since we're physical performers and all this there's a lot of work that goes into that, but have you had have you had stuff that comes up, or you questions or explorations specifically about how you're dealing with your body on stage? In the well, um, going back to the fat suit I wore for a long time, for years, for a life and for day, I wore a fat suit underneath a red one-piece thing and another thing over it, and. Well, here's an interesting thing. Uh, Abner was directing me, and I didn't have a dress over the one-piece red union suit. And he said, you know, I think you need to wear something over that, because we're looking at you, and you look naked. Mm -hmm. And is that what you want? And then I realized he really was right. He said, why don't you play with the idea of modesty? So I put the white thing on, and then whenever I change into a little bikini over a fat body, and but never try never to let my bits show. Same with getting into another dress, changing, always trying playing with the modesty. And I found that for me, it actually did make a lot more sense the idea of modesty and not wanting to um, get naked like that because it did start to feel like mm. getting naked. So that was an interesting change. And Even though your naked was the union suit. Mm -hmm. The naked was the union yeah. suit, because that was my naked. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not interested in getting naked, mm -hmm. whether it be my own skin or... Uh, but I used a fat suit, because this character is always eating, um, and sweet things. And I realized, well, I... But, but And she feels very comfortable with herself. She wasn't worried about eating and not getting fat. She was very comfortable with her, her bulky, bunchy body. Then I let go of the fat suit, mm -hmm. um, and I just wear the union suit. And I think, again, it was just, it, I got to a point where I didn't need that as protection, because it was protection for me, because mm -hmm. I didn't want my body to show under it. And that was a fake body on top of my body. So mm -hmm. it was a long process of just feeling comfortable with myself. And now in one of my pieces, um, a Shakespeare piece, I wear a tight dress, which for me as a woman, I rarely wear tight clothes. And it, I'm, I find it difficult to wear clothing that really shows my body. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> it's, it's um, it's actually been really good for me personally to get to that point where I'm actually quite comfortable wearing it on stage. There also used to be uh, this idea that your costume should cover most of your skin, that you shouldn't mm -hmm. show skin. Old clown idea. Um, mm -hmm. Which I think that's... Well, I cool. said, forget about that. Yeah. Yeah. Too hot. <laughs> Except for the men and the women? Yeah. 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 A real ring yeah. idea, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's There's a, uh, well, none of you are at this point yet, but as you age and you work physically, it's been very, I mean, I have a constant dialogue with whoever I can talk to about if I look, because I used to do a very, uh, a very, very, very complicated steps, which now I don't think look good on me. I, I feel they, I feel I'm too stiff. So I, uh, so I've, I've gone in a whole different physical direction still using that the walk has changed and the way I use my arms has changed and uh, and and kind of saying this is what an old what an old person's clown looks like uh, which I find I mean I don't know I think it's interesting I don't know if anybody else does but I think it's interesting so that's um, and uh, and and yeah, so that, that has really morphed physically through my life. We, we with the troupe, we, um, we did a show that had um, a few numbers with the, we call them the nudie suits, 
which were these, you know, nude color unitards mm -hmm. with little fake nipples on it. Mm -hmm. And again, it was like the play, the, the exploration <laughs> that the clowns could do about their bodies while still being covered, yet they looked naked, was just was just hilarious to me. Yeah. I mean, it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. It was hilarious to us anyway. <laughs> it was hilarious because you know the sort of you know like a ch different ways of you know being modest or sort of glorifying and that feeling of being naked except they weren't naked and it was just, it was so great to, I think there's just so much more we could do that with that, but um, that that thing of naked, not naked, or modesty and body is, is so interesting um, and, and, and yet coming up to that edge of like, oh, that's not, you know, now they're naked. I mean, because it did start to feel like mm. getting naked. So that was an interesting change. And uh, even though your naked was the union suit. Mm. The naked was the union yeah. suit, because that was my naked. Mm. Um, and I'm not interested in getting naked, mm. whether it be my own skin or. Uh, but I used a fat suit, because this character is always eating um, and sweet things. And I realized, well, I. But, but, and she feels very comfortable with herself. She wasn't worried about eating and not getting fat. She was very comfortable with her, her bulky, bunchy body. Then I let go of the fat suit, mm -hmm. um, and I just wear the union suit. And I think, again, it was just, it, I got to a point where I didn't need that as protection, because it was mm -hmm. protection for me, because mm -hmm. I didn't want my body to show under it. And that was a fake body on top of my body. So mm -hmm. it was a long process of just feeling comfortable with myself. And now in one of my pieces, um, a Shakespeare piece, I wear a tight dress, which for me as a woman, I rarely wear tight clothes. And it, I'm, I find it difficult to wear clothing that really shows my body. <laughs> and so it's, it's um, it's actually been really good for me personally to get to that point where I'm actually quite comfortable wearing it on stage. There also used to be uh, this idea that your costume should cover most of your skin, that you shouldn't mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. skin. Old clown idea. Um, mm -hmm. Which I think that's... Well, like cool. said, forget about that. Yeah. Yeah. Too hot. <laughs> Except right. for the men and the women? Yeah. 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 A real ring yeah. idea, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, There's a, uh, well, none of you are at this point yet, but as you age and you work physically, it's been very, I mean, I have a constant dialogue with whoever I can talk to about if I look, st because I used to do very, uh, a very, very, very complicated steps, which now I don't think look good on me. I, I feel they, I feel I'm too stiff. So I, uh, so I've, I've gone in a whole different physical direction still using that, the walk has changed, and the way I use my arms has changed, and, uh, and, and kind of saying this is what an old, what an old person's clown looks like, uh, which I find, I mean, I don't know, I think it's interesting, I don't know if anybody else does, but I think it's interesting, so that's, uh, and, uh, and, and yeah, so that that has really morphed physically mm -hmm. through my life. Mm -hmm. We we with the troupe we um, we did a show that had um, a few numbers with the we call them the nudie suits, which were these you know nude color unitards mm -hmm. with little fake nipples on it. Mm -hmm. And again, <laughs> it was like the play, the the exploration <laughs> that the clowns could do about their bodies while still being covered, yet they looked naked was just. It was just hilarious to me. Yeah. I mean, it was hilarious. Mm. It was hilarious to us, anyway. <laughs> it was hilarious because you know the sort of you know like a ch different ways of you know being modest or sort of glorifying and that feeling of being naked except they weren't naked. And it was just it was so great to. I think there's just so much more we could do that with that. But um, that that thing of naked, not naked, or modesty and body is, is so interesting. Um, and and, and yet coming up to that edge of like, oh, that's not, you know, now they're naked. They're, I mean, it was funny to watch the audience with those numbers because the audience was like, they're naked, but they're not naked. But I feel like they're naked. I have a lot of feelings about them. <laughs> I have a lot of feelings. I don't know how to feel. But, um, but it was great to sort of work that edge of what, 
what everybody feels about that. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, sort of mixing the last question and this question uh, of what some gender weird thing that was sent to us, whatever that question was, and that everybody actually started talking about inappropriate sexual things that were sent to them. <laughs> I thought that was interesting that that's how that an got answered. Um, and how I, uh, what I'm aware of with my body, what I'm doing with my body, or whatever that is, my body on stage as, as a clown, is actually, it stems from, I think, from being told that uh, I was absolutely unfuckable. Oh by Philippe Gaulier, uh -huh. <laughs> who I had a fantastic experience with. I got him when he was absolutely fabulous, and I worked really well with him. I, I, so, um, it w And it worked to be told that, that I was absolutely unfuckable. It was very funny. Everybody laughed at me <laughs> and how unfuckable I am. And that, it, that has, I've, I've held on to that. Um, and, and again, probably for all kinds of very wrong reasons that that has resonated into positive action for me. But there you go, there's my own fuck up. Um, but that I, I realized as I was thinking about when you asked the question, I was like, I don't, I don't know, my body on whatever. Mm -hmm. But I very happily have therefore set about as a clown to make myself seem more fuckable. Mm -hmm. Like I realized there's a connection there that I hadn't really um, actually identified mm -hmm. solidly. But not from a place of anxiety or oh my god or the way that Sonia, you know, like right now might be sitting here and hope that my that like I'm not going to sit here and <laughs> let these sag and this stick out. You know, I'm going to do my best to try and you know look good somehow, whatever. You know, you know those that's the sort of consciousness that I have of, of Sonia's body right now as Sonia, as a as my clown. I quite happily forget about it that and solve the problem of, oh, well, then I need bigger tits. That's cool. I can do that with bubble wrap. That's really excellent. Um, done. Fuckable. Happily yeah. fuckable, aren't I? Because that's apparently what I am now. That's what the, so it didn't pose a problem for me. It gave me a way to actually deal with the reality that is difficult for me in life. It became so much easier. It is so much easier. So it's almost a relief, I think, to be in my body as my clown. I'm more comfortable there as myself than I am here right now. My, the last question I want to uh, pose to you before we take to the audience is this question that was on the, um, the, the press materials and promo for this. Is clowning one female a radical act? I think clowning is a radical act. <laughs> Third, fourth. Can you say why? Well, because it's radical, whatever your gender or or self definition, uh, because you're trying to step out and go. This is what people, uh, this particular person is, or this is what I think. Uh, this is what I see society. So anytime you you do that, it's hopefully radical, because it's, I guess we have to then say what's radical, yeah. but yeah. anyway, anyway. pardon me? That's what I'm asking, why is clowning radical? Because it's sending, it's, it's uh, asking, I mean, it's like the history of clowning, you know, uh, it's asking society to turn itself upside down and look at the hierarchy, look at power, look at gender and roles that people play. And uh, like the Sats, you know, they live from town to town. Uh, that's been its job. And it's a needed, people need it, I, I believe. I also think that as a, for anybody to be a clown is a, a radical act for oneself because mm -hmm. I'm putting myself out in front of you and allowing you to laugh at me for my idiocies. And therefore, to allow you to laugh at yourself because anything that's idiotic about me is idiotic about you too. <laughs> and so I'm just letting you laugh at me. Mm. And I feel I do it, I try to give that as an act of love and um, it's a gift to let you laugh at me. 
I, I totally agree with what both Strickland and Hillary, the minute you said radical, I think the act of the amount of vulnerability it takes anybody to be a clown is completely radical in a, in a, a time where it's all about the cover up yeah. and the layering on top. If the, the vulnerability that really takes to just open it up, that, that's a radical act. And I've, I've been thinking of, about um, joy, radical joy, mm -hmm. and radical hope. And I do, I've been doing a lot of research into joy and hope, and, and what those, how those terms are defined, and how they are, how those um, elements of the human experience uh, are examined philosophically through history and things like that. And, and, um, What's the psychology of joy and the psychology of hope and what is the difference between hope and, and optimism, things like that. And um, and I think that I think that to hope is a radical act in a, a world that <laughs> is giving us so many reasons to not hope. And I think that um, to to propose joy. As a val as as a not a valid but as an important response to our horrific and tragic world is a radical act to propose joy as something that actually has a muscle behind it and that is essential and that we need to offer it up not as a stupid momentary diversion as just a happy blip in time to sit here and laugh at my stupidity but that to actually understand why that is so profoundly necessary for us as human beings and necessary right now in uh, so much in this world that we are in that uh, and there's a, a, a trauma uh, therapist that has wonderful things to say about clown and she says um, something about um, how do we uh, how can we live with a with not a superficial hope, but with a courageous hope in such a tragic world. Mm -hmm. And that is what I feel like as a, a, that clowns are exploring with every everything that they do, is that they are exploring a courageous hope in the face of, of tragedy. And of course that's, you know, that gets into, well, do you think your world is tragic? And the world is beautiful and all kinds of other fabulous things as well, but yeah. Yeah, so the clown offers that as a as a radical radical possibility in response to our world. I think hope and joy. Any? I also. I'm sorry. Sorry, I was just thinking. Just made me think of something else. The radicalness of the fact that clowns live in in the problem, mm -hmm. and then we don't run away from it. That's where the juice is. We live in the problem. We we screw up in front of everyone and make it worse. And make it worse. <laughs> And we live in the problem in a society when it's all about the cover up. Literally, I think that's pretty radical to like live, live in, live in the dumper, live in the mud. That's really pretty radical. I also think that the, 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 freedom, the freedom of the clown is radical, and particularly for women, and not not just for women, but for other um, folks who are not the dominant people. So to be on stage and actually be free is mm -hmm. radical mm -hmm. for women to do. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's pretty, pretty just mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, some questions? Do, do you folks have questions they want to? It's hot. It is hot. It is hot. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility? Or is it too yeah, loud? Yeah, I think the microphone's not to pick up the yeah. air conditioning. Yeah. How much has it changed in the past 10 or 15 years? Hmm. People who have been found now, 15 years ago. Is there, is there something that's really changed, bubbled up in this new time? Or is it kind of how it's been? I think there are more, and, and what I've heard from other people is internationally there are more and more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. more of us. Because it feels like being on the screen, but because it's good man, you're like, hey, I'm here. Is it? I didn't quite understand what was your question. Is, there, is, it, is it different? It is different, like, uh, I'm the just, dynamic. Yeah, the dynamic. I do, I still think um, the, um, I still think the structures, the big industry and 
commercial services and variety shows are still stuck a little bit in the old the old way. So and and uh, what I've heard from people is um, you know you know you have to get in a room to be able to say like here's how we could do it differently and we can include more women in class. And sometimes they're like I don't and I know guys who are like I don't know how we're gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you just have to open the door, like, uh, uh, we'll tell you how to do it. Like, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how. So I think there's still some of that, but I, yeah. what are you on? Yeah, I mean, there, are, there are still a lot more men at a professional level, both in charge of who gets hired and the number who get hired. It's, it's often if I'm at a, unless I'm at a women's clown festival, of which there are a good handful of now around the world, and those are primarily women performers and amazing women performers out, you know, in, in Europe and South America. Then um, it's usually predominantly men because uh, you know, I mean, proportionally there are not as many women women's shows out there yet, as there are men's at that level, but there are more and more, so watch out world. Yeah. <laughs> Seen some great ones. Um, I so in, because I'm, of, of the research that I'm doing, I'm talking to an awful lot of female clowns and asking them questions about this. And the thing that, as well as reading, they, there's a very small amount of literature on female clowns, John Davison being one of the few people that has actually written about female clowns, and thank you very much for doing that. Um, but there's it, what I have read several times in various, from various sources is that uh, female clowns, one of the, the ideas is that they came about, they started to appear because only when men, male clowns were sick or died. And, and so I've read that as that's part of our history. And at the same time that I'm reading that, this summer I interviewed a whole slew of, um, of Canadian female clowns who, who I think are sort of like, the, the, I consider them the, the first generation of contemporary female clowns. And they're, they're in their sort of late 50s into 60s. And so they've spent a lifetime doing it as women here have. Um, and they repeatedly, in separate interviews, with no idea of what was being said elsewhere, they repeatedly said the exact same thing of, well, I get work. I am, it's, uh, one of them said, well, I, I'm, it's like I'm the problem solver. I only get hired when there's a mistake. So I am the mistake, or I'm the gap filler. These sorts of things were said repeatedly, and they identified that it was when a man gets sick, gets a better gig and leaves, or dies, then they call me in. And the similarity of, like, we're talking 1830s or something, or 1880s, whatever it is, and terrible, as a researcher remembering my dates, but um, that, and now we're talking 2018, and it is exactly the same thing that is being said. That is very telling to me about the situation with women still today, if that's what's happening. And the, the, the reality of that is, is that also, sorry for just the reality, reality of it, but is that that means they identified that <clears throat> when they get called in, when they finally get the job, they get given 24 hours to rehearse into it. Mm -hmm. And so that's the work that is then allowed to be developed by that really fantastic, incredibly talented female performer. Whereas the men that got the job in the first place were given whatever it is, three weeks, six weeks, whatever it was, to develop their work. But the woman is brought in to, to solve the problem and is given 24 hours and therefore really what, you know, and so the, these, these are, are big problems in terms of what then is able to be evolved from the talent, just the raw talent of the performer, if they're not being given the equal opportunity to evolve their craft. I just want to say, I have to leave. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Frankly, 
most men and many women still don't think a woman is going to be as funny as a man. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. I can feel it. I think men are often surprised that I'm as funny as they are. <laughs> I don't know, there's so many people from past generations, women that I think are hilarious, wonderful clowns from vaudeville, uh, early TV. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying, sitting here trying to, uh, yes, there's more men employed, but that's certainly true. Uh, but I would hate for us to just say, well, there's been no one. Because there's been lots of fantastic uh, women clowns. Uh, I think probably in the 19th century, as I've said, I think they hid that they were women in order to be on stage. But I know they were on stage. I know it. So, um, yes, I think like in theater, like in almost everywhere, there's fewer jobs for women, there's no question. That's I'm not debating that. Um, but I just, there have been female clowns who I find yeah. incredibly inspiring. And when I was young, I, could, I was not watching some of the you know, tapes of what they were doing. You know, Gracie, and George Allen. Yeah, I mean, it's just called, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, how did she do it? Yeah. Amazing. Questions? Yeah. Um, you've all spoken a little bit about um, things people have said to you about. Um, I can't hear. Well, I'll repeat it. I'll repeat it after she. Um, but I'm going to ask. How do people respond when they find out that you're a clown? Like your your families or like friends or like is it met with like really? Or people invalidate you? Or are they supportive? Are they excited? They want you to perform on the spot? Like how is it like coming out as a clown? People who like, <laughs> know you otherwise. <laughs> and you're taking life like that. So I'll repeat. The question was that how? What is it to uh, tell your friends and family that you are a clown, and how are they responding to you <laughs> as you come out as a clown? Like the dinner party? Maybe. Yes. Do they ask you to perform? <laughs> what, what's the, what is it? Uh, <laughs> well, many years ago, I, when I first started doing clowning, my father said, when are you going to do something besides clowning? Clown. <laughs> and then when I did a solo show many years ago about a woman from Toulouse-Lautrec's paintings, you bet you back, he, um, Woman with the long black gloves mm -hmm. and back. He watched that show, which was not a clown show, and he said, Now I understand. Which was really cool because he saw that the clown work really made a difference in my work as an actress, especially in that kind of a show that didn't have a fourth wall. I was talking directly to the audience. And I will admit that for a long time I would not call myself a clown because I didn't, un personally, I didn't understand the respect that the art form deserved. And I always wanted to be taken seriously as a woman, as an artist, as a performer. And I just, I, I, I couldn't call myself a clown. And I still, when I say that I'm a clown, I put a little, um, a little explanation of, you know, like a theater clown mm -hmm. or like, a sort of Charlie Chaplin mixed with Lucille Ball. <laughs> yeah. That kind of a clown. Not a circus clown. No offense to circus clowns. Not a birthday party clown. No offense to birthday party clowns. I was one. But yeah, because people say, oh, that's cute. Oh, oh he's, uh, uh, still to this day, many people see me and they say, you still clowning around? <laughs> and I, <laughs> I really hate it. <laughs> it, it in, 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 Thank you. She's been my word corrector this week. She's <laughs> infantilizes, which that just did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's the same disrepute that everything to do with, uh, you know, say you're a juggler. Oh, you juggle for balls? Or, you know, um, or, and so I you don't say that. that. Or, you know, it, you're a clown, no, oh, you make or uh, you know, just a birthday party or something. Uh, I don't know. So it's the same. It's all one big umbrella of disrepute. You know, yeah. uh, Puffy invented an organization which you might all want to join. 
the Circus Anti-Defamation League, <laughs> uh, which, for example, said the Senate is called a circus. When the, a circus is well rehearsed, 90 people <laughs> know every <laughs> two, and they're working well together. Yeah, and they're working well together. <laughs> Whether they agree with it, they're all working <laughs> So I, it's not like hubby is up there. He's the president of the cabinet, so he <laughs> But anyway, the duck, it is, it is a big umbrella of disrepute, I think. Dancers, too. Dancers did it, too. Yeah. Oh, you pulled it. Yeah. Are there other questions? It's not really a question, I just wanted to add in to the uh, talk about were there women clowns in the 19th century especially, and were they dressed as men and hidden. Uh, I'm working with uh, Vanessa Tulman, who's the director of the, what is it, the Circus and Fairground Archive in the UK, Sheffield, um, and she's recently sent me some, we're going to start working on it to publish it, some uh, newspaper cuttings from I think it's in the 1860s. Uh, about women clowns, and there were hundreds of them, and, uh, different names. and they were mostly building themselves as lady clowns, um, which then was still the term, you know, 30, 40 years later, uh, the only lady clown, there were several of those. Um, but there, there are a lot of them, and um, I think, as in other areas of women's history, perhaps, you know, the, it's not that they weren't there, but they, they weren't important. Um, at least come up in this newspaper archive, so hopefully we'll be putting them out there soon. They, they, they were there. Any more? I'm going to show you. Sure. Yeah. Um, I just had a question about using, because you guys kind of mentioned um, people's reaction to gender or like an audience, what they would expect, the baggage they bring, all that type of thing. So I was wondering if you could talk at all about using that in your toolkit kind of or playing that up or down or or based on the gig per se or if you're at a traditional if you're taking a gig at a traditional circus if you're doing a theater gig if you're just doing walk around or in the hospitals so can you talk about that a little bit the, the flexibility of it or if that makes sense uh, the question was um, how um, folks are um, I'm sorry, my brain started working on an answer, so <laughs> one little question. Uh, how folks are working on this, um, <laughs> just kind of how um, is gender just part of your toolkit? Like, uh, we're talking about how audiences and different audiences might bring different ideas to your performance, whether you want them to or not, and how you might anticipate that or use that in your performance um, based on the different types of gigs that clowns can do, whether you're at a traditional circus, whether you're at a theater performance, or whether you're in the hospital or doing walk around, more improvisational type of stuff. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, why don't you go and answer it? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, I, know, I am very interested in exactly that question of what's the um, relationship with the audience and gender and how am I um, in my own performance and with the truth how are we just working on those different aspects and particularly when I am doing audience participation stuff I'm often trying to um, you know work on that kind of stuff you know can I can I get a, a guy in the audience to uh, kill me you know how is that going to work? Is the audience going to accept that and laugh? And they do, and you know, and and things like that. Or um, uh, we've also had um, things about when shows, when kids are there, are we going to change what we're going to do? You know, what goes over kids' heads and how much is um, you know whether there's stuff to change about that? Not that much actually, because we're still in a, cer a certain realm that's not X-rated, I and mean, it's not even R-rated, it's totally G-rated, even though it's sophisticated about, about that. Um, but I'm interested in those questions about the, the gender and audience and working on that. So that's particularly what we're, what we're working on. But I think there are definitely people who, you know, they'll take an act that's in a variety show, and when they go to circus, they'll do something, they'll change it for, for reasons, right? I mean, when uh, Cecil, when Amy 
Gordon came to work in your circus, did right. she? She didn't do her kazoo act. No, she didn't do her kazoo act. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also a difference. But, but yeah. she did uh, age program. Yeah, she did the roller skating act. Pretty much as she's been doing it, I suppose. I mean, um, if we were doing a, a late night show, I'd love the kazoo act personally. But uh, we do perform in St. Louis. Uh, I think your question should be thrown back to you because it seems to me society right now is talking about gender. You know, how am I addressed? What's the pronoun you're going to use? You know, and and uh, I would hope your generation of clowning will take up the topic because it's like it is. I mean, worldwide, go for it. It's right there. You know, and I've I've often played with it. You know, what do you call me? I I'm a, I'm an it, but. Uh, I think there's a lot of room there. For, you know. for me, there's uh, well, the thing about Amy and the Kazoo Act. I mean, that that's more of an age appropriate, and I have some things that I will change slightly for age appropriateness. Um, in my show, I, in a life in her day, I get a man in the audience often. I hand him an engagement ring, and I get him to put it on my hand. And then later when I come back, I realize, oh my god, you're married. Sometimes yeah. I've actually been in a, in a room of all women, or where it's all women in the front, and I can't find a couple, so I've used a woman and said, oh, when I go back, I'm all right. I go, oh, uh, you're a woman. I don't <laughs> do women. <that." laughs> or I've had a young person, a young man, and I say, oh, you're, you're too young. Or a gay man, oh, you're with him. Oh. So I'll change it so that it can fit any situation. And that's actually been kind of fun when I realized that I'm not always going to find a couple. And the audience has been very embracing of that. That allowance of different kinds of people in the audience, and they've embraced that there are all different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's a really um, relevant issue of uh, to just be conscious of what are we doing with, with that in clown? How do we play with that? How do we open up that world? Um, that clowning, I think, it, it is pretty heteronormative in, in how it has been played, how it is played out. The ring, the marriage, we're dealing with all of these sort of very known normative ideas of this is what a human life is is that, that you fall right. in love, you get married, those sorts of things, so they get played out, and they get played out with female roles an awful lot. Um, and when I, I went back to Philippe Gaulier in 2009 and took clown with him again just to see what was what, um, and uh, I had been with him in you know, 1994, uh, so a long time prior to that, and in 1994 I was essentially heterosexual and now in 2009 well I, I was in a relationship with a woman and I was really not really clear how I would define my own gender and I didn't really give a two how I had to define that um, but I stood up on that stage with a friend a male friend who is married to a man and we were because we were partnered together and holding hands immediately there is the assumption right that we're a couple it's just like there's there's just that immediate thought. If I was standing up there with a woman, it would not be immediate that we were a couple. And Gaulier talked to us about, you know, that we were a couple. And I said, and it was somebody from Canada, and who was actually a, a former student of mine. And I said, no, 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 no. You know, he's my student. I wouldn't. No, 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 no. And then this joke evolved about, you know, this relationship between me and my student. And when I got off stage, and we had a great one of the other students who was queer, she came up to me and she was so mad at me. And she said, why didn't you, you never said that you're gay. I said, well, I don't fucking care who I'm sleeping with when I'm on stage. Like, it's relevant to, I was just, I, I played the game. The game was proposed that I was sleeping with a guy. I don't care. I, I follow the game. And, but she was livid with me, and it stuck with me because I think she's got a bit of a point, and I'm not sure where I stand with that, but of what are we playing with and how... Did I need to make a, a, a stance? Did I need to reveal something? Or I didn't think that I did, and I don't. I still don't think that I did. Actually, I very happily played the game of 
being in a heterosexual possibility with this guy. But it did make me pause and think about, because then what's funny? Like what's our, our how do we be in a time of inclusivity and the need to be inclusive and for very good reason and yet, is it funny? <laughs> what if it's not so funny <laughs> to, to play that game with two women up there? Even though I might find it way more fun in life to be with that woman, <laughs> maybe on stage it's, it's not. And I don't know, you know, how can, I think it's a, it's a tricky point that we're at of having to be respectful, and I'm not suggesting for second right that we shouldn't, but the need for respect and inclusivity and everything that we must attend to in society actually poses some difficulties, I think, on in a form like clown where we're dealing with what's funny. But what's funny changes. I, I don't it think does. It's a and that's fine. There's uh, plenty of other material. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's that's fine. That's I, yeah, I'm not I guess yes. I'm not saying that it, I'm not saying it's not fine. I'm 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 saying that I think that there is there's just there's a discrepancy right now. I don't think that we have caught up with making it funny. I don't think we're there yet that it's funny somehow because we're still dealing with it's so new in, in, in our world. But I, I, I agree <coughs> with both of you, but it is, you know, humor changes and we're at this moment that humor is changing and these questions are how do we, how do we not, I mean, clowns are provocative and whatever, but how do we not offend or or degrade certain people with our jokes and um, the same, uh, you know, as as uh, male clowns would do about women. You know, there's there, it seems like it's a, a great opportunity <laughs> these days to to really look at what we are finding funny and how there's more material that can that can be brought out that's not just the same old thing. So um, that's the opportunity. That's the opportunity. I think I want to. Is anybody? I, I think I think I want to finish unless there's a burning question. Is it burning? Well, I've been burning, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I interpreted her. Uh, there's two uh, two parts of my question. We can answer them or not answer them, or we can have a private discussion later. But I interpreted her question as being like the expectation that you spoke about. Sonia. Sonia. Uh, at the beginning about how there's an expectation or what, what people are finding funny is the things that are degrading to women, right? The certain, certain expectation about being sexy or dumb or whatever. And that, and that I interpreted her question as like, how do I use that expectation of the audience to then change that expectation or something or, or work with it or play with it? So that's that's, if you have a, if you have some thoughts on that, I'd be curious about that. And the second part of my question was, how do you see uh, contrast, comparison between the comic world and the stand-up world uh, as far as how women are participating? Stand-up stage. Stand-up stage. For women? Do you think? I think women were doing great. Yeah, actually, yeah. 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 I mean, it's much more. I have a friend who yeah. has left stand up years ago because it was impossible for women. Yeah, and she recently said if it were today she never would have given us really changed. Really changed T V? Yeah. Wow. That has changed. Yeah. Um, I'm amazed it changed so fast. Mm -hmm. It just yeah. part of your hope and joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can you um, contrast and compare like uh, like being a clown and being a stand up and oh I don't know anything about stand up. Yeah. Huh? I know nothing about oh. stand up. I think, that's, I think that's a whole other, a whole other conversation. But, to, but to, to, it's a different, it's a different sensibility to me, just in, a, in like a nutshell, without unpacking it. But it's, it's a completely different mind at work, I think, in the stand-up mind from the clown mind. Have you ever seen Judy Holliday? Look at one of her films. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Judy Holliday, to me, is just unbelievable playing beauty. It's cloud. It's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Well, to your other question, get back to me in a year. <laughs> because um, does anybody know C.B. Goodman? Yes. 
CB and I are are going to go back into working on a show. Um, we have a male director. I told the salary, but he, he thinks women clowns are funnier than men. So um, we're working on something that we think is about it's kind of tearing apart feminism and making fun of it in the end result, hopefully showing how important and how necessary it is for the rest of the world to keep up with feminist ideas and how important the feminism really is. <coughs> in a sense, proving it through our play of the show. Using, yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll, we'll have some answers for that. <laughs> One of the things I think about, about how to work with expectations <laughs> of former as women with, the, with my troop is that we are we're, um, doing so many different characters and so many different mm -hmm. um, worlds and so many different modes and moods that that, that sort of aspect of showing so much about women so that you know it might be it might be that at first you go oh I think I know what this is but then this woman will change you know she'll come back later and she's different so that sort of richness of the world and and um, using using that what is resonant in the expectations and then expanding on it I think is, is a place that we're trying to work to open that up um, and it's not always about sexuality, but it's just about our expectations of what the roles are and the stereotypes. And instead of working with stereotypes, working with archetypes and really sort of invigorating at a deeper level. So um, so there's more. I mean, one thing about humor is that the audience has to empathize with the person on stage. So that in itself, the, you know, sort of empathy and the women's, the, the woman clown, the subjectivity, having to sort of be in tune with that is already a challenge. <laughs> it's already a challenge, just for some people. I mean, it already it already affects that and opens that up and, and deals with those expectations. I know there have been um, men who've come to our shows that I hear later, they're like, I'm not sure if I was allowed to that. I don't know. You know, I thought it was funny, but then I don't know if I was allowed to. So, you know, so there's a whole experience yeah. going on yeah. about that. So, Colin. Yes, I, I've been um, thinking about um, how uh, important it is for the truth of the moment to be there on stage with your clown and to be able to really uh, find that truth of the moment is where a lot of that's going to be found when you're performing. And that being difficult men have a certain kind of dignity they're trying to maintain, women have a certain kind of dignity they're trying to maintain and, and pursue their passion. Um, but uh, one, one sensibility or sensitivity of a clown might be able to go into a more um, risque or blue area if she can keep her truth. And another might not be that kind, have that kind of sensibility. So within within everything, there is the uniqueness of each individual clown and where they can go with that. There's no standard of that. Um, so it's not really a question. training from being a young clown into becoming a more mature clown, mm -hmm. at the beginning a lot of people go into very stereotypical kinds of characters, you know, brides, whores, and nerds, washerwomen, and, washer 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 um, and the more one matures into who they are as a clown, they pay attention to who am I, mm -hmm. and, and we start to go deeper, and then it does become about that individual as opposed to mm -hmm. the idea of a clown. I think today, I just want to add, I think today, I just want to, what Hillary said, I think today with what, one's the younger generation that's starting out, 
with clowning, they have more of an opportunity to tap right into that heart of themselves, of not the idea of the character, per se, as it was different maybe 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. And I think that, I just want to say that to the younger people that are starting out, just go for it, go for who you are. You know, you can start, you can develop characters in different ways, it's great, but you don't have to rely on it. You can really take that process to find out who you are, who your clown is. And, um, you know, just really that exploration today, I think is so much more open without relying on a certain character than it was, you know, 30, 40 years ago. So I just wanted to throw that out there. One last question. Sorry. Yes, I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, good. Go for Before it. Before I talk, I was like, yes. Um, <laughs> And um, also I have a question is um, uh, the, the rule model, the, which I like, it's kind of, I like Lucy, the, the, the female model too. Um, the also the most I like Bill Owen, the Charlie Chaplin, the Buster Keaton, and, and Hubble from uh, Marx yeah. Brothers. So, but uh, sometimes I think why well, they're funny, but because they're men. So mm. sometimes I stop the, the try to catch, or even I try to do the, uh, the so for example, belowing, just dancing, it's movement, maybe I catch that, it's gonna be funny, I believe so. Even I imitated his funny each movement dancing, I just tried to do that. But I sometimes I thought, because he did it, that he's a man, so I, I don't know that character is man, that's why funny. Even I do that, it's not funny because I'm female, or sometimes I, I feel like that. And uh, also, uh, one theater play The 39 Steps, which I really liked it, I favorite. So I want to try. I don't know, British <laughs> English, I don't know. <laughs> but, but, but there's a, there's a studio, it's Clown, it's named Clown. But most of the production is male. But I couldn't understand why. I only sold strongly because men, I don't know, because the, the, the male role, uh, the, the 39 steps, they do many characters, female, male, but I can do that. Female right. can do, male, but I cannot take audition because audition detail says the male only. Mm -hmm. Like, I think yeah. it's, I don't know. You know, I, I do think still that there are very, that, that people have an idea of what, and, and it's a whole other subject, but what, are there things men can do that are funny that women can't do, and things that women can do that men mm -hmm. can't do? Are there things that are inherently more male? Create funny in men as opposed to women. women is the most obvious example. Right. If a male clown gets another male clown, that's funny. If a male clown gets a female clown, that's like yeah. I mean, that's what we think. But then, well, I don't know. They have to. Then you have to take that stereotype and play with it. Right. So how do they in my classes all the time? But what you're talking about is that world is not changed. I don't know if it ever will, frankly. Yeah, yeah. That's. But you're talking about race and gender and casting and. Yeah, 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 minds. that's, that's, yeah, I have to change their production yeah. mind. <laughs> hey, 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 but, <laughs> right. but beside that, beside <laughs> that, so in the role model, so you pick up the, from the Charlie Chaplin, from the male character, yeah, so, so we which, you yeah, I can do, um, but also maybe you do that too, so, um, so Bill was the eccentric dancer. His training was as a dancer. Yes. An eccentric dancer. Uh -huh. That's what he defined himself uh -huh. as when he first started working in circus. So that's, so that's what he did. And okay. then he started uh -huh. making pieces uh -huh. out of that. And uh, he did whiteface. And mm -hmm. then he worked into other things. Mm -hmm. But you can start. An eccentric dancer is not a gender specific thing to be. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do that. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>
I know, I know, I know the, the <laughs> report. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I do know the song. Ask John he's got a good list. It's on his blog. It's on his blog. I think um, it, we should end now because everybody's going to run to each other and get resources um, and find out stuff like that. So I just want to say thank you all so much for being here. Um, thank you, Cecil and Hillary and Julie and Sonia for, for having this, showing up for this conversation start thing. Um, I also want to thank all of you for being here and just showing up today to join this conversation. It's really exciting to have some people be interested in this. Um, I also want to thank Ruth Sergal, who was so helpful when I was planning this. Mary Conway, uh, these are some people I had conversations with. Mary Conway, Tiffany Riley, Amy Gordon, Michelle Matlock, Sarah Petersill, Karen Gersh, Barbara Allen, and Isha, J Isha Jansen Faith were so helpful also when I was putting this together. Um, the members of my troop, all of them, some of them are here tonight, but everybody, all of those women who give me so much inspiration for all this work, and Sean, who also does, Evelyn and Molly and Nina, who are not here, who always, for so many years, we played together. Melissa, thank you so much for everything. Melissa has helped put this together, and I'm so committed. Brittany, who is uh, filming, here, there, up in the back. Thea and BJ at HowlRound, who hopefully will come through with us. Claire and her friends, Claire and friends, thank you. Um, John, thank you for suggesting that I contact the Rick about this, and thank you also for all the, the research and the work you've done, and um, everybody go check out those blog posts. And thank you, Michael, and everybody else at the Brick, who's been fantastic, and then my friends and family. Being here and being supportive. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.